honorable minister to visit Kerala and see what we have done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Fauzia Khan ji. Dr. Fauzia. Thank you, Vice no, Chair. No crosstalk, please. Uh, I must first of all thank uh, Professor Manoj Jhaji for having brought up this subject. He has brought up not only the subject of health, but also the voices, the anguish, the pains of the poor and the deprived, and not only the poor and the deprived, but also the middle class, white collared population who suffer because of uh, lack of quality health care. As uh, Rajinitai has mentioned, that even a member of parliament in an emergency, what she had to undergo, I think we have something to learn from what she spoke here. Sir, even I have uh, introduced a bill in this house called the Universal Health Care Bill 2021. And I think many of us agree on this subject that uh, the right to life, as mentioned by many members here, that Article 21 says right to life includes right to health. But I think we need to make a distinction we need to provide more emphasis to the right to health because without that, the entire country is suffering. Mahatma Gandhi said it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. So if the country has to enjoy real wealth, it has to be in good health, mental and physical health. The population of a nation cannot be productive only if it's individual, it can be productive only if its individuals are physically and mentally healthy, sir. In fact, uh, John Ron has said, take care of your body because it's the only place you have to live. So, not John Britas. You have the only, the only place you have to live is your body. So it should be taken care of. Sir, unfortunately, the current healthcare system in India reflects an economic and a social gap in accessing quality health care and draws attention to further measures that are required to be taken by the central government to assure health to all its citizens. And it's very simple. The way the Right to Education Act was brought, providing free and compulsory education to all the children of the country, in the same way the Right to Health must be brought, if not, uh, if this bill is not accepted, the government must come in with a bill which gives free and provides free health care to all the citizens of India, irrespective of their class, their uh, economic status, or whatever. Sir, many of my colleagues have mentioned that uh, the expenditure on health is only 1.6% of the gross domestic product. And uh, K Mr. K yes, 1.4. And uh, my honorable colleague, Mr. Keshavra, also has said that it should be at least 6%. I agree with him that we need to increase expenditure on health because unless it is done, we cannot provide uh, the huge population of India the relief from the ails that they go through. Sir, out-of-pocket uh, payments are the predominant mode for financing healthcare in the country. And it shouldn't be there when 70% of our population is below poverty line. So our subsidies itself indicate how poor our country is. And here out-of-pocket expenses are so predominantly high that we need to really think about it. This is grossly unfair and exposes a large number of households to catastrophic health expenditure, which has often been a contributing factor for rural and urban indebtedness, as mentioned earlier by my colleagues. Sir, we have also spoken about the pandemic here. The pandemic has indeed exposed many gaps. Many of them have spoken about the way uh, it was handled, but I would like to speak about, you know, certain acts were acts of nobility, were acts of human service, were acts of sacrifice. There were many people who came forward to do that. But at the same time, there were drastically 
terrible acts of exploiting poor patients, rich patients, whatever, by the hospitals during that time, who thought this is an opportunity. It is a big opportunity to make money. And what was happening was that people were dying, but at the same time, their entire economic uh, resource was spent on these hospitals. And the further generations also suffered because their complete economy of the household collapsed during the times of the pandemic, sir. And we must pay attention to this because we cannot allow a country to be ruined whenever there is a time of emergency, if hospitals come in to loot or come in to, you know, uh, exploit people, I think there has to be uh, an end to this by the government. And this can be done by a collaborative approach, aligning the existing government schemes, policies, the interest of the payers and providers, along with innovative partnerships. So we have the Ayushman Bharat scheme, but as uh, Dr. Amar Patnaik has mentioned, that we need to include inpatient and outpatient here. It's only inpatient. There is no outpatient. The primary health care must be included here. And one more lacuna. I would like to draw the attention of the minister to the lacuna in the system, sir, that in the hospital, when a patient is being treated and the family member or the caregiver goes to ask the doctor, what is wrong with my family member? The doctor gives no answer. The patient doesn't know what is happening to his family member and what is the diagnosis, what is uh, the treatment being given. The doctors are silent. I think the doctors and the medical staff must be taught, they must be given trainings on soft skills and ethics, what to tell patients, what, how, what all, they should be telling about the diagnosis, about what is the uh, you know, future fate of the patient. All this is not told. It's hidden. I don't know why. In uh, other countries, I have not seen this happening. But particularly in our country, this is very common, that uh, the medical staff feels you know, above everything, and they don't want to reveal anything to the patient's families, which distresses them. And it sometimes results in assaults on doctors and the medical staff. So this is one of the primary reasons which the health department must address. I feel transparency is needed. I think a record of the patient must be maintained digitally and the, it should be given, the access should be given to the family member uh, with the, the required amount of privacy needed. But the family of the patient has the right to know what's happening, what is the fate of the patient. Otherwise, uh, they come in for a shock when something wrong happens. Sir, I would also want the government to, you know, because with every right, there is a duty attached. There cannot be rights where there are new, no duties. And here, the duties rest with the government. And I believe that the government must create a national public information network of hospitals. During the pandemic, we realized that we don't know where to go. Patients were wondering where to go. There were so many people, uh, you know, the social uh, people working in the social fields who came up to show you yeah, this hospital has this facility, this hospital has this facility. So such a data must be mentioned and it must be put on public domain for people to know where they should be going when uh, you know, the uh, time arises. For instance, uh, Rajinitai, when she collapsed, uh, I don't think the other people must have uh, you know, immediately realized where to go. So she was taken to wherever they felt it was good. So if you have a data bank, it will be very helpful. And uh, sir, a pricing strategy, so just give me two minutes. A pricing strategy committee must be made to make sure that the citizens are not exploited financially. And uh, even for Ayushman Bharat, uh, you have a pricing limit fixed up, sir. Sir, also, we have seen that when medic the people who are responsible for health care, they, they neglect the patient. They are not punished. They, are not, they go scot-free. There has to be a penalty for that. They should be accountable. They should be 
responsible for the noble work that they are doing, but many times we see that they are absent from their work, they are not going there regularly, and um, government uh, staff people, they ask patients to go to their private hospitals so that they can charge them there. Sir, at the end, I will speak about what uh, Mr. Rakesh Sinha pointed out about rare diseases. Honorable Minister, we have met you several times regarding this. A group of parliamentarians have written several letters to you regarding this, about rare diseases. There is a rare disease policy, sir, but it is a meaningless policy because you ask for corporate funding and a patient requires, you know, crores of rupees to get treated. Little, little children who have got, you know, little to live, but if you give them treatment, they can survive. And you are asking them to go to the corporate and ask for funding? 1,87,000 is the only amount that could be given. So, uh, that could be got through the corporate funding. I have approached the Honorable Prime Minister. You were speaking about the empathy of the Prime Minister. But unfortunately, we, I myself, here in this very house, I took, you know, a letter signed by 20 MPs asking him for an appointment. Give us an appointment so that we can speak about these rare disease patients who can be helped. And it is such an important, such an emotional subject. But the Prime Minister has not given us time, sir. If this is not given, Please what conclude. else? For what else will we get time? Please conclude. Many MPs are asking for it. I urge the minister, sir. Please consider rare disease patients please conclude, and please member. help them with the required amount of money so that these little children can be saved by just a little bit of help from the government. It's not a big amount that we are asking. A hundred crores to be spent from the Rashtriya Arogya Nidhi. Please sir. conclude. Please so, conclude. sir, we are out of time. Uh, with this. I will only uh, end my uh, speech, sir, by saying that instead of enhancing the fund for health care, we are applying GST to hospital rooms. So I think this is very, very, uh, you know, cruel to be doing that. GST not only on food items, but GST also on hospital treatment, I think, sir. The government must withdraw this decision immediately. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank sir. you. Thank you.